In this video, we're going to learn how to prepare a standard solution and also perform dilution calculations. Firstly, what is a standard solution? It's a solution of accurately known concentration, something that we normally prepare ourselves. We often use this solution then for a process called volumetric analysis. This allows us to often determine reacting volumes of different solutions in a process called a titration. We're going to look at performing titrations later on in topic 5. Standard solutions use what we call a primary standard. It's essentially a compound that meets certain criteria. It is of high purity, it is a stable compound, it is highly water soluble, which allows us to form a solution, and it is of high molar mass. This ensures that we can allow for accurate weighing of the compound. To prepare a standard solution, we need to use several pieces of equipment, things such as an electronic balance, a volumetric flask, as well as distilled water. This image helps summarize how we prepare a standard solution. Now I'll demonstrate how we can do this in class as well. Firstly, we take our primary standard and we measure out a particular mass of it. The next step is we often then transfer that into a beaker. We dissolve this in a small amount of our solvent, which will be distilled water. Give it a stir just to ensure that it completely dissolves. Following from that, we want to transfer it into our um, glassware, which is what we call a volumetric flask. Now what we don't see is that the volumetric flask, on the neck, we can actually see that there's a marking and it indicates as long as we measure our solution up to that mark, it will guarantee that we have a specific volume of solution. So this is called our graduation mark, or sometimes it's called our calibration mark. We'll worry about that a little bit later. What we do at this step is transfer our uh, solution, um, so through a funnel into our volumetric flask. We just want to ensure that all of that solution has gone into our volumetric flask. So in the next step, what we do is we then use some distilled water and we rinse our beaker here. We want to ensure that all of that solid has actually gone into the flask. We don't want to lose any of that, otherwise that will affect the concentration. What we can also do is use the distilled water to rinse the uh, funnel here as well, just making sure that none of it has stuck onto the funnel itself. From that point on, we then uh, add our water. Usually we add it to about three quarters of the way full. And then we use a uh, pipette, perhaps a teat pipette of some sorts, to add the final drops in. And what we want to do is ensure that that liquid uh, sits on that calibration mark. We know that liquids form this curvature, which is what we call a meniscus. And what we want to ensure is that the bottom of the meniscus sits exactly on that graduational calibration mark. Now it doesn't matter so much if you're a little bit under because you can always add more water, but if you go over then you essentially need to start again. We can't guarantee, we can't work out exactly how much volume is in it unless it sits exactly on that graduation mark. Once we've done that and we've checked it, we then just stop it and we can shake. Usually we just need to invert it once and then we just label our volumetric flask with things like the solution, the date prepared, concentration as well as our name. Sometimes in an experiment we'll need to perform a dilution. This is usually necessary when a sock solution is too concentrated and it's not suitable for lab use or for consumption. Normally a specific volume of uh, stock solution of known concentration is transferred to prepare a diluted solution. This image shows you how you can carry out a dilution. So imagine that we've got our stock solution here, it's just far too concentrated. We want to dilute it, so we often transfer a specific volume using another piece of glassware called a volumetric pipette. It itself contains this so-called graduation calibration mark, so we just want to transfer a specific volume of our stock solution we are now going to transfer that into a clean volumetric flask. And from that point on, we just want to add uh, the remaining volume uh, with distilled water. So this will help dilute our stock solution. And we can see there it's diluted by the light color. 
and again fill it up to the graduation mark. What we have to understand is that when we transfer our uh, stock solution into our diluted solution, the number of moles does not change. So in other words, the number of moles of our stock solution is equal to the number of moles of our diluted solution. We know that the number of moles can be calculated by using this formula n equals c times v. So we can therefore say that the concentration times the volume of the stock solution we transferred is equal to the concentration and volume of our diluted solution. This is normally written as this formula here, C1V1 is equal to C2V2. We can use this formula to solve for any of the above variables. So let's just have a look at that. First example, determine the volume required to dilute 0 0.200 litres of a 15.0 molar uh, sodium hydroxide solution to obtain a 3.00 molar sodium hydroxide solution. Let's break down this problem um, by writing down what information we have. Keep in mind this question is trying to work out the volume that's required to dilute this stock solution with that volume to obtain that concentration. So we're going to summarize the information we have. For our stock solution, we have a concentration of 15.0 molar or moles per litre. For our diluted solution, we've got a concentration of 3.00 molar. The volume of our stock solution we're using is uh, 0.2 litres or 200 mils. We need to know what the final volume will be in our diluted solution. Because the number of moles in our stock and diluted solution are going to be the same, we can use the formula C1V1 equals C2V2. We're going to then rearrange this to solve for V2. So V2 is equal to C1 times V1 divided by C2. We've got all of these values here, so we just need to substitute them in. 15.0 times 0.2 divided by 3, and we get an answer of 1.00 litres. In example 2, uh, we want to determine the volume of a 2.00 molar stock solution of NaCl that's required to prepare 250.0 mils of a 0.500 molar concentration. Let's go ahead and list the information that's presented. So stock solution and diluted solution. We know we've got a concentration of 2.00 molar for our stock. We want to dilute that to 0.500 molar for our NaCl. We're trying to work out how much of our stock solution we need, but we know we end up with a volume of 250.0 mils. We can actually keep that volume in mils, so I'm going to do that and we're going to then work out what V1 is in mils as well. So using the formula C1V1 equals C2V2, we need to solve for V1. We rearrange the equation and we get C2V2 over C1. We then substitute our values in and we end up with an answer of 62.5 mils recorded to three sig figs. It may be worthwhile just to do a check just to confirm the answer there. So that concludes this video, um, which covers looking at how to prepare a standard solution, how to also perform a dilution, and also calculations involving dilutions.